Well, welcome to From the Desk of Jeff Solomon. And last I checked, I think I'm Jeff Solomon. I'm trying to be like Mark Graham, though, but uh, I'm actually not at my desk. I'm at the ASI show in San Diego with a couple of special guests. And I'd like to introduce uh, Bobby Lay Layu. He is like a brilliant marketing guy and the new entrepreneur uh, of the year that ASI has appointed, Mark Graham from uh, Right Sleeve A, you know, our friend from Canada. That's right. Are you kind of like sick of getting that stuff? I love it. I love it. I'm far away from home right now. What else can I expect? <laughs> yeah. it's, it's California. And uh, we just wanted to sort of have a round table to, to solve the problems of the industry, of which there are many. You think we could do that in under 10 Probably minutes? Eight, uh, eight, eight, eight minutes. Eight yeah, eight minutes. We'll be done. It'll, it'll be all good. Now, one of the things that we see as a problem in the industry is conveying the value proposition of promotional products. And this has been evidenced by uh, the state of California, uh, the governor, you know, calling them, you know, tchotchkes, things that people throw away. They don't really realize that our medium is, is a valuable branding tool that, that really is effective. The same thing happened in uh, was it Minnesota was the next one. They don't really get what we do. And, and even from my end, in dealing with suppliers, uh, our, our valued supplier marketing partners on free promo tips, we really need suppliers who can provide content that will help distributors be effective in selling their product. It's, it's really about more than just stuff. And, uh, and it's hard, actually, to, to come up with some of that content. So experts, what do you guys think? That's a big question. Um, I, 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 thirty seconds. Okay, thirty, 30 seconds. seconds. All right. So, so uh, <laughs> okay, I'll take a stab. No it's, pressure. Okay. So, so uh, how do we how do we prevent how do we prevent what we're selling as a perception to be perceived as landfill? Because that's really the challenge we're talking about. I do think this goes back to first us appreciating the medium of ourselves. If we're not using it correctly, then our clients aren't using it correctly. But also getting at the heart of what these projects are about. Um, you know, it, in, a, in a funny way. We are in the business to delight and surprise people yeah. because we sell things that people love to give away. And when you think about it, almost everything we sell is that the purpose is to delight and surprise. And the heart of that is what we sort of need to start tapping into from suppliers and distributors both. We need to start understanding better the heart of the story. And, and instead of just purveying tchotchkes, we need to start giving the whys. You know, we used to call them case histories, but, but these are stories now and what's going on with the web all our buyers, our prospects, prospects are uh, qualifying us through their screens, laptops, tablets, phones, and they're making more buying decisions. They may still call us on the phone, but they're making their buying decisions through through these tools. So I guess in a roundabout way, I think we can redeem a, a lot of this really bad impression. We just start marketing a little better by telling the stories behind what these projects are about. Because there's some cool projects. The smallest order can have in it a really neat story. I think that one thing that I have been inspired by or have, have looked, or an industry that I have looked for inspiration towards is what ad agencies do for their big clients. When you think about what ad agencies are so good at, as Bobby says, is really telling that story, is creating a, a story uh, that leverages some sort of emotional connection that gets us as consumers to go out get excited about buying Tide or Crest or whatever the case may be. And I don't see any difference between what an ad agency is doing with their medium and what we're doing as promotional products companies or agencies or whatever we want to call us when it comes to how it is that we market ourselves and how we market the medium that we're selling. And as Bobby is talking about this whole concept of surprising and delighting people, you think about this, this strong emotional connection that people have with free stuff or with tangible product. If I'm going to give something to Jeff that is a beautifully designed bag that I know is right up Jeff's alley, it is, it, it, it's, it's inspired by Apple and I know that Jeff loves all that stuff, it's got my logo on it, and I give it to Jeff, it's that split second, that moment of absolute delight that Jeff has in his, in his eyes is what we're trying to capture as a company and really to try to take that story and that's what we're selling. The bag, secondary. It's, we're selling that. And that's what the ad agencies have done and have been so brilliant about. And I think that's why we really look to that industry and say, why aren't we like them? Why are we not respected like them? Why are we just the salespeople that are selling trinkets and trash? So I think it's a way of just repositioning how we go to market yeah. and tell those stories. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not just promotional marketing, it's actually emotional marketing. 
Exactly. Yeah. It is a fantastic uh, way to, to evoke emotions and then capture that. I think one of the one of the questions we get too is um, um, YouTube and this, Scott was asking this about uh, the media channels that we're using, like Twitter and Facebook and YouTube. Um, if, if we start tapping into the heart of the stories of the projects we're doing, we all of a sudden find ourselves with the hardest thing that is to come up with, and that's content. Yep. Um, suppliers and distributors both. If we start developing these stories, you're never going to ask again, what should I publish? You're going to be asking, oh my gosh, which of these stories do we need to tell? Which is most important? Well, we really need to rethink how we're going to market and what the, our value proposition is. I saw even in one of the, the sessions here at the show, somebody, you know, we use the dry ah, track skills. You know, we, we don't, I think we need to raise the level of professionalism in our industry because, you know, if we think of ourselves as that, you know, where are we going to go? Well, and I think a big part of that, well, it, there's many, many reasons for that. I think that what you hear at a lot of these conferences is that no one ever grew up thinking that they would start a promotional products career. That they, most people have got into this business a second or third time career. Uh, maybe they were encouraged to get into the business because it was a get rich, or get rich scheme. Some of the marketing out there is like, work from home, get rich. Right. It's easy. <laughs> yeah, right. And I think that a lot of that, and, and well, that could be true to some extent, I think that really strips out the creativity, the professionalism, and just reduces it to a base commodity. And I know that for us, um, within our organization, because we love telling stories and we also like having fun and poking fun of certain things, is that we've built out a lot of marketing that pokes fun of that entire segment of the industry so that we can elevate and differentiate our brand and really tap into that emotional connection. So. Uh, it doesn't work for everyone, but it is certainly very much in keeping with our values as a company, and, uh, and it's paid off very well. You know what I love about that, too? I absolutely despise the statement that we're all the same. Because when you look at the clients we serve and the projects we're doing, we're not all the same. I mean, I, I can get electronics and food from both Target and Walmart, but those are two distinct brands with two distinct experiences. Yep. And uh, Right Sleeve has a really cool, eclectic brand, and th there's brand field, there's others that I just love, and they all have a unique DNA about them. And the more we tap into and believe in what we're doing and begin to start communicating that, uh, two things will happen. One, we'll start differentiating our brand from other brands. Yep. And number two, actually we'll start exciting our audience because they love to sort of be bragged about and talked about. And that's that's sort of something that I knew would be important, but that was far more important than even I imagined. Wow, great stuff. Thank you both for sharing uh, and joining me at, from my desk, which is really my desk. Uh, thank you folks for watching and make it a great day. Thank you very much. Thanks.